you're hearing strange noises coming from the rear end of your old Mercedes when you're rolling at slow speed, particularly some sort of ticking or scraping noises, I recommend you inspect your emergency brake shoes. You can't imagine how many things I've seen go wrong inside that rear rotor. And a lot of people don't even know there's emergency brake shoes in there, but this is what you're going to be listening for. Some, some type of scraping, squeaking noise. If you hear this, you know, that is not the pads rubbing against the brake rod. There's something else going on inside here. So we're going to pull this wheel off. Let's take a look at this together. Well, it's pretty obvious that this rotor and caliper have been recently replaced. You'd think that you wouldn't have to worry about the emergency brake if someone's already worked on the brake system like you see here, but I'm gonna pull the caliper off. You have to pull the caliper off uh, two bolts. We're gonna hang this up out of the way and then we can pull the rotor off and get a good look at those emergency brake shoes. I believe that what drives the development of new tools is pain and frustration. And so is the case for me personally with these emergency brake shoes on the rear ends of most Mercedes Benzes. I mean, over the years, I've been so frustrated trying to get these shoes on and off. I think I've tried every tool in the book and it's gotten to the point where I don't even want to do this job. So last week I was looking at replacing the brake shoes on this car. One of them is totally worn off. And I'm thinking, I don't want to do it. Maybe I should just put the hub back on and forget about it. But no, I have to do it. So I want to show you some of the tools I've tried to use in the past. The big problem is getting these springs off. You have to get these springs off to get the shoes off. And then, of course, you've got to get the shoes on. And if any of you've worked with brake shoes before, this is typical of a lot of old car brakes that use shoes instead of pads and rotors. So I try to get this off by prying on this, you know, and you get in here and you pry and oh no, you try, okay, maybe try this cotter pin tool and get in here and maybe you're, maybe you could get it off, but then you go to try to get it on. You couldn't pull it hard enough. I remember using vice grips to try to pull, pull, pull to get that spring stretched out enough that I could get it back in the hole. And then you've got this little spring up here which is the compression spring that holds the shoe up tight against the backing. You know, I started out trying to use some needle nose pliers to go through the lug bolt hole and the, the spring's got to be compressed. Somebody did come out with a special tool that kind of works, but one of the problems is that it doesn't fit some of the new style springs. You know, it's supposed to go in like this and look, it won't go in the hole. You can see here, it'll go in the old spring and that's kind of nice because it'll go in and you can compress it and turn it. So that became a frustration. And finally, when you're all done putting the new shoes on, you've got to adjust them. And the way you adjust them is you go through the hole and turn this. And using a little screwdriver that's small enough to get through the hole, you know, it usually slips on that rotating wheel. So three days ago, I decided, okay, I'm, I'm done. I'm going to develop a tool. And this is the new tool right here. It will do all three jobs, getting this spring on and off with ease, compressing this spring and getting it on and off and with ease. And when you're all done, it'll go right through the lug bolt hole and allow you to easily adjust the brake chute clearances.